I'm curious to, uh, so that I guess these two two parts are kind of related, but you said that the social inequity of cancer and the sociology of who is affected. Um, yeah, I'm definitely interested to, to hear about those two. <laughs> those two are huge. Um, black folks in particular, uh, black men are 10% more likely to get cancer than white men and almost 25% more likely to die of it. And with black women, we actually see a lower rate of cancer, about 7% lower than white women, but 13% more likely to die of it. And this goes back partially to what I was talking about earlier, which is that early detection is so important. And there are so many systemic barriers in place for black people and for other racialized people just to be able to access treatment. Um, And that can be medical care providers aren't taking their concerns seriously, which is a consistent problem we see, particularly with black women whose pain is not considered as important and not listened to. Um, It may be they can't take time off work. It may be they know they couldn't afford treatment, so they don't bother to get diagnosed. Um, It could be they have not had the ability to become as educated as many uh, white people get on different cancer symptoms and things like that. So they don't realize when what they're dealing with is likely a cancer symptom. Um, There's a number of other things beyond that, like the fact that many Black people tend to be economically disadvantaged, and so they don't have access to as good a nutrition as many white people do. And so then you start getting that nutrition aspect going on. Um, Some cancers can be affected by, well, for example, red meat increases risk of certain kinds of cancers. So frequent consumption of red meat, if all you have near you is a McDonald's and you're eating off the value meal, you know, multiple times a week, it's not great for you. So there's all these factors that have been put upon black populations in North America and elsewhere that, um, and I'm not going to go into much detail about elsewhere because my knowledge base is more based in North America. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, you know, in various African nations, you're going to be dealing with different systemic factors there that affect things. But here, this Um, is what we're looking at. I want to potentially clarify one thing just because I I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, so I I do understand the the kind of social uh, aspect of like you were saying like the less education and uh, typically um, you know the pain's not taken seriously so they can't get treatment as much. Yeah. Um, is there because I, I suspect there's probably someone out there who might be thinking oh if if people of color are more like like get get cancer at a higher rate. Is there any genetic component to that or is it purely just or mostly there just increased okay. rates for certain cancers among people with different genetic ancestry, but it can also just as easily go the, the other way. Like um, there are certain cancers that black women are far less likely to get than white women and then other cancers where it's reversed. So it's not an across the board thing by any means. It's very much based on those particular cancers as to where your risk falls based on your ancestral group. Oh, thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to to make sure that, like, again, so I understand so that the audience, because there's probably yeah. someone out there who, if I'm if I'm asking in my head, someone watching yeah. is probably asking sure. it. So, so yeah, so uh, there's, I wouldn't say there's a huge across all cancers. Mm-hmm. The genetic aspect to me is not going to be as important as all of those social inequities that we're dealing with, and that's also where we're looking at the significantly increased rates of death. It's not because they are black or Latin or whatever. It's because they're not getting treated early and they're not being treated as appropriately and they don't have as much access to health care. And we've actually been starting to narrow this gap to an extent. And luckily, that is falling faster, like year to year from like 2019 to 2021. um, White men have about 1.6 fewer cancers and black men have about 2.6 fewer cancers. Fantastic. We're getting there. We still have a long way to go, but the progress has started. And part of that is just the cancer community becoming much more aware of these barriers and trying to figure out what we can do to address them. Because we shouldn't have anybody dying unnecessarily. Like it's, I mean, fine, we can't save everybody, but we shouldn't be having unnecessary deaths, especially not to preventable things 